All right, so the barber session's coming March 13th. You got a week left to get tickets. So this is the last time I'm going to, you know, shout it out. Um, we got people from out of state coming in. So if you're even close by, come through. Come check it out. So this is the before and afters, or the befores. As you can see, he had a ball spot. It's a stress spot. It happens to people. Nobody really knows why. But, you know, they usually shoot um, some steroids into it with a needle and it grows back. So, of course, we're going to st start um, our levels from bald to the Andes all the way open. These are the Andes Masters. And uh, the one guard all the way open is the next guideline. And from here, you can fade up. You can fade down. It's your choice. We're going to fade down in this uh, example. I'm using my purple magnetic guards. Listen, the new ones, they don't work as well as the old ones. Like people keep asking me, how come my one open doesn't blend right into my two? You can still do it by flicking, but or by raising um, the clipper up and kind of like scraping at the scalp. But try to get the, the double magnets. And I believe you can call Andy's and get them directly. They're going to be hard to find online or in the store. So you can see I'm fading down. Using the number zero guard now, I'm starting open, and as I go down, I close it until that that guideline. And this, you know, this is the steps right here. I'm opening it a quarter of a um, at a time. I'm closing at a quarter at a time. See that? So if we're fading down, then we're gonna close a quarter at a time to fade it down. You don't necessarily have to do it when you have the guards on. You can like skip some some closes. But if, when you have no guards and using the, the Andes all the way open, this is where the detailing really comes in handy. And I would suggest you use a quarter at a time until you get to that last line of demarcation. And then, you know, you close it all the way and you take that line out. And if you can't take the line out, you know, you could use a, your trimmers or, or your outliner blade or your 5-0 blade. Take that line out. I use a lot of my corners of my teeth and as you can see I stretch the scalp if you can't get a line out because it's not cutting close enough by stretching the scalp you might be able to get a little bit closer and that might be just you know what it takes to take that line out and if that doesn't work trial and error try the uh, the trimmer Try the, the outliner blade. Take that line out. And this beat, this beat was made by my cousin. All my beats are made by my cousin, all the instrumentals. He lets me use them. I thank him very much. If you guys want to show him some love, some support, definitely check out his uh, SoundCloud page. The link will be in the description. There's free downloads and stuff for you aspiring rappers. Every barbershop got an aspiring rapper. So I'm blending the beard in as well. And you can see I'm, I'm leaving the line up darker. He doesn't necessarily want, you know, the fade as high as it is in the back all the way around. We brought it up that high because of that, you know, that stress spot. But, you know, there's no rules to this barbering thing. I mean, if you can create illusions, if you can make it look, you know, um, a little bit lower in the front where he wants to keep a line up, then, you, then do it. There's no rules. Everybody wants to create names for certain haircuts and and create all these rules and stuff and man this is art man there ain't no rules to this just thinking like that will set you apart it really will so you know i fast forwarded through the other side you guys get the steps and you know once we do the other side i'm gonna connect it the back with the rest of it and i don't necessarily fade like this I, I usually fade like painting a wall. You know what I mean? You do one side and you, you know what I mean? You continue to move it uh, gradually all the way around. But uh, for the sake of the video and for the speed of the video, I went ahead and just faded one side and sped up the rest of it. If you guys don't like it, definitely let me know. I have no problem with constructive criticism. And uh, now that I'm on the other side, we're just kind of detailing the blend detailing the blend now and if I, I fade it down in the beginning of the process it's almost like cross-checking when you're detailing fade up now 
Start from the bottom and fade up. Since in the beginning, you faded from the top to the bottom. And if you start in the beginning from the bottom to the top, cross check it, detail your work, and fade from the top to the bottom. Try it out for yourself. And you can see when I get to the the hairline, I kind of turn the clipper so that the teeth is um, facing towards his face. And that's how I keep that area a little bit darker. And you can see in the, um, down at the bottom I wrote, you know, that the Andy's Masters is a must have. It really is. You don't understand, like a Andy's clothes, everybody thinks that's a zero. There's so many more sets below a zero that could really make that blend look like super, super, super blended. So, like a crazy transition. And the Andy Shaver is a must. Unless they have sensitive skin and they'll bump up. And generally that's people with really tight curly hair. But even if you do it right, even on them, you can you could definitely use a shaver. Don't use a razor though. Now, I, I pointed here at the highest point of his hairline. You can see it's a little bit light there. That's the highest point of his hairline. That's where I start. If they don't have a receding point, then you can start in the middle and then connect the sides. But I like to start where the receding part is. Because if you start at the receding part, I mean, that's the highest point anyways. So you want to leave that as natural as possible. If you start from somewhere else and you leave it as natural as possible, all of a sudden when you get to that receding part, it just doesn't match. It's going to look crooked. It's going to look jagged. You're going to waste time. You're going to have to go back at a part that you already lined up so that it looks straight. This way, you avoid raising that, that receding area. And you also don't waste time because you can match the rest of it up with it. To the best of your ability without raising it. You know what I mean? Raising it up anymore. And you see right here, it looks like, I don't know, the last time he got lined up or something, he was pushed back a little bit. So he has that light area. I'm not going to push it back anymore because we're going to add a color enhancement at the end. You know when you're doing this part of the beard, don't push it in. Don't you know? Don't put, don't push that line in any any more than it needs to be. As long as it's a nice straight line or nice um, clean line, keep it as natural as possible. And I use the corner of the blade, a lot of the corner of the blade when I'm doing um, this arch right here. And Honestly, like, I, don't, I try not to spend too much time doing this part. Any hairs that are overhanging, I try to grab with the trimmer. But I don't waste a lot of time, you know, running over the same spots, irritating the skin, um, creating inflammation, just making it really uncomfortable for the customer. I don't do that because I'm going to pass the razor, right? Even on people who bump up on... On the top part of their beard, as long as you just do the the the, the lineup, you're not shaving their cheeks. I mean, it's gonna come out sharp and it's gonna create less irritation. And I love these these trimmers, the slim lines. I like both. I got two of the LIs. I got the pros. I like both of them. They they're both awesome. The big difference between the two is like. When the pros are dying, you can feel them dying. You can feel them losing power. The LAs will have, they go like 100 or 0. There's no warning. But I think the battery lasts longer on the LIs. But I like the feeling, the ergonomics on the pros. They feel sturdier. They feel like they're built better. <laughs> but the LIs look nicer. I don't know. It's crazy. It's kind of like you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. Um, you can use points, point, point references when you're doing the beard. Like, you can use like the corners of of his lips where they meet, the bottom and the top um, part meet at the sides, as your point of reference. Like I'm doing here. You know.
you know and when you stand right in front of the client you'll see that it's it's even you know and it, his beard doesn't connect all the way but your trimmer because it's that t-blade it'll it'll you know what i mean it'll fill the gaps when you're trying to measure whether they're even or not or whether it's connecting it's uh it's matching up with where his lips meet. Now here on the neckline, I do just like on the lineup, um, the highest point or the middle of his beard, and then I'll connect the rest with it. And that's just around the lineup. I try to flip the trimmer over and, and kind of do scooping motions. And if I, it, you know, if there's, there's some hairs that, you know, it just won't, the trimmers will, just won't cut when you flip it over. So you can do the scraping, you know, some scraping, but make sure you're light handed with it and try to avoid doing that too much. And then I'll pass the shaver. So I added this cause there's some color enhancement haters out there. Don't watch no more if you don't want to see color enhancements, but if you do follow along. Listen, color enhancement to me is, it's hair color, man. It's been around for thousands of years. People color their grays. Women color their hair. I mean, men color their hair. I mean, when Eminem was dope, like, everybody want to be like him. They're bleaching their hair. Nobody said anything. This is just hair color. And it's, it just so happened makes, makes hair colors look dope. Now, um, Began has a, a bad rap looking like a Sharpie. It doesn't have to look like a Sharpie. And as you can see right here, I do the outline and then I smear it in with a towel. It doesn't have to be wet, it's a dry towel, but you can see that it looks natural. This is how it's gonna look when you wash it out. Now, the longer it stays on the skin, the more it process, it's gonna get darker. But once you wash it out, this is how it's gonna look. And you'll see as I'm applying the rest, it starts to darken. And then, you know, we blow dry it, it darkens more. But you can always tell what it's gonna look like um, on how it looks when you first apply it. That's a little tip, that's a little nugget right there. If it don't look right when you first apply it, that's how it's gonna look when you wash it out. see I don't go all the way like I apply it right at the lineup and then I'll smear it in a little bit underneath the lineup to try to like blend it in and create like a natural look we'll do this all the way around I don't do it in the mustache because the mustache is a coarser area you do the mustache it's gonna look like you know you put some eyebrows above his lip <laughs> Now we're, we're cleaning everything up with the razor, pulling the skin. Small strokes, right around the, um, the lineup. And you can see it's starting to get darker. You know, when you smear it in, it doesn't look like you're applying color until 10 minutes later, it darkens up. You're like, oh, it's all over the beard. After you blow dry, you know, what I like them to do is, is kind of like try to like move their face around and, and see if there's any cracks or places where there's not enough color. And then, you know, I'll reapply some more. And right here, I put some shave gel and I'm going with the grain because what I did was I, I applied this shave gel. I brushed it, the hairs down. So, because he got long hair on the top, it's like a five on top. Um, so, I want to catch all the strays. By going with the grain make sure you apply a good amount of shave gel above the lip and you can see that I didn't put shave gel anywhere else it's not as sensitive but above the lip it is and I did it on the hairline so I can catch those strays train the hair down and catch them I'm doing the same thing on the other side it's a long process guys like if I was working in a salon, you know, you get like a hundred dollars for this at a salon. In a barber shop, I charge thirty-six dollars. And 
I mean, you, you're cutting their hair, haircut, beard, you're applying color, blow dry, you're shampooing it out. You can shampoo it out, condition it out, whatever you want to do. Um, it's not going to, you know, it's... And this is what it looks like after you shampoo it and you dry their hair. It looks natural to me. There's a lot of haters with this process. And um, now I'm doing finishing touches. I'm applying product. The product that I have is a, is a natural oil-based product. So I rub it into the beard and everything. Brush it in. Make your client feel like 100 bucks. He's happy. You see? So thank you guys for watching. Again, reminder, the barber session is coming March 13th. If you got a week left, tickets are sold at tune45.com. Subscribe. Share the videos. I'm I'm a I'm at 40,000 subscribers and I'm trying to get to 50,000 by like the end of the week. Um so help a, help a brother out.